Should we be singing? <laughs> Pretend there's music. <laughs> okay, welcome everybody to episode six of How to Keep the Fights Clean in the Sex Dirty TV or Fights Clean Sex Dirty TV. We are in episode six today. Sexy How six, sexy number six. <laughs> How to keep the sex dirty during. During. And our topic today is top tips for brave, bold, and blissful sex life. And we're here with Susan and Tim Bratton, our awesome experts in this delicious <laughs> oh. realm <laughs> of sex dirty during. They were super excited to get this slot, and we are super excited to have them on this slot. I'm here with my wonderful wife and co Founder, partner, Gabrielle, Sandra, Gabby? I'm co-everything, right? Co -everything. We're co-everything. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Susan and Tim and everyone uh, to the show. It's so exciting to have this episode. Um, Susan and I and Raj as well and Tim, we met at a wedding of another person who we're going to be interviewing for the final episode, Adam Galad to his beautiful wife, who otherwise known as Sandy Pants. Um, <laughs> and it was just such a delight. I had uh, heard of Susan's work and even heard her speaking on other experts' shows. And when I met her, she gave us this awesome, awesome, awesome tool. You want to hold that up there, honey? Called Steamy Sex Ed from Personal Life Media. <laughs> and actually, is it all right, honey, if I do their bios now before we sure, tell them about that? Sure, sure. Great. Um, the two of them have actually been quite experienced in this realm. We got to do a wonderful live show from Vegas. How long was that show? Ten hours long? Seven. Seven, Seven hours long live, but it was a marathon. We were around for a lot of that. Um, but Personal Life Media, who we mentioned before, um, you know, Susan, she is an author, an award-winning speaker, a serial entrepreneur, and she's written over 20 books and over 1,000 articles, done online courses, and it all comes from her wholehearted commitment to, and I love this, to a shame-free and frequent sexual pleasure. I like that she throws that in because that's such a common complaint is how often it's happening. Um, and she's often, you know I love alliteration, Susan's often referred to as the marriage magician, with, which I think is just so fun and delightful. And then today is really a rare special treat because Tim is often the tech hero and the behind the scenes and uh, works on strategy, but we really love having couples on this show and so we really appreciate Tim joining us. And he, you know, he even has three patents, he has quite an interesting background and I'll leave it to him um, what to share with you, but from all sorts of training in the relationship world, not to mention the experience of how many years you've guys been together? Uh, 24 together. Yeah. 24 years. That's the best experience. But uh, he's well-educated and experienced, and we're just delighted to have you both on the show. Thank you. Well, we're really happy to be on this particular episode, as we told you before we started, because uh, we like the one about dirty sex. Yeah. <laughs> we got the dirty sex episode. I, 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 just posted earlier. I just posted earlier, and I said, I'm sure this is going to be our steamiest episode yet, people. So either yeah, beware so or get in. <laughs> <laughs> So awesome. Um, I just want to show our guests and our audience uh, um, how we organize our show. And, uh, yeah, because we've referenced the topic for today, which is how to keep the sex dirty during. And as you know, every week we alternate, or as you maybe you don't know if this is your first episode, that we look at fights clean, how to keep the fights clean one week, and then how to keep the sex dirty the next week. And so as Susan said, she got the sexy episode number six, um, and we're just thrilled to be diving into this fun topic. Because Raj and I have said it before, you know, we stand for a playful, peaceful, passionate relationship. And we are best at being playful, like we can get silly even in conflict, even with sex. We're not afraid to laugh. And we do a pretty good job of keeping things peaceful. And we even do a pretty good job of keeping things passionate. You know, we're always having best ever, we call it best ever sexy time. Every 90 days is our commitment. It's got to be the best ever. Um, and still, like, that is our weakest area and our, probably our more shy area. So it's such a treat to have you two on where there's no shame and no embarrassment and also that huge sense of play, which is so important to us. Yeah, yeah. We've already had huge shifts in our, our sex life just from the brief time that we've known you and studied your material. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you from a, ver a variety of places of our body. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I'll go ahead and let them know, Susan, that when uh, we did the show for your live um, event for selling the steamy sex ed, uh, and we were interviewed as as happy customers, um, we said, I think one of the quotes I had was, a whole new category of an orgasm. That's one thing I said. And <laughs> yeah. she wrote about it and had that be the subject in a headline. So yeah. um, she certainly has me blushing already, and I'm sure she's going to have fun today. Yeah. So, <laughs> in a good way. In a great way. In a great way. So I just want to quickly um, show how we organize our content just so that everyone's clear how we do this and for upcoming shows. So we have uh, how to keep the fights clean with our little heart with the halo on the left and then how to keep the sex dirty with our devil horn uh, heart on the right. And then we have before as it starts, during, and after because we like to look at the different time frames that uh, fights and sex happen. And it's the way we categorize our content, and it's really fun. And we want to make it really accessible because so much about relationship advice is very theoretical, and more and more we want to be seeing pieces that are practical, and you can, you know, they're memorable, and they're hands-on, and you can apply them right away. Great. So today we're in Sex Dirty During, yeah. and let's take it away. Okay. Great. So um, we have plenty of tips, um, but we're going to refrain on ours. But we're going to start with ours because we know there's going to be a bit of an on-ramp to the spiciness with you guys <laughs> coming on. And so we'll talk with some of the top level, just a couple of our, our distinctions first. And uh, one of them is called towards versus away. And it's just this energy of in relationship in general, but it can specifically be applied in the bedroom about being proactive about saying what you want, not saying what you don't want. So you don't want to be complaining, <laughs> ow, not like that, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> you <such> know, a <laughs> <buzz kill. laughs> Even those subtle ones, you know, um, people are really sensitive and even, even people who have really strong relationships can have more difficulty communicating what works and what doesn't work. So if you bring just this proactive perspective about what you do want, that it's pro and it's active, you're leaning in. So, you know, I'll be personal here with Raj, I always tell him a little lower. <laughs> but whatever that That's descriptor is. That's way better is, than you're not doing it right. <laughs> yeah. Um, or I'd love it if. Um, but it's just the idea of, in general, just be moving forward for what is most important to you. Yeah, and it makes a huge difference um, on either side of the equation, whether it's the woman asking and, and moving it forward with the, with the man or vice versa. Um, you know, we, we can get sensitive when, in, when we're making love and uh, a lot of us don't have a lot of muscle in, in, in the realm of sex, at least sophisticated <laughs> muscle. It and, certainly isn't one that people are getting the kind of education yeah. about that you know is now available today. But yeah. most of the messages are this is bad, this is wrong, and then all of a sudden you know it's supposed to be this great thing, but you know there's all these other layers that you have to remove about it. Right. So the moving toward uh, topic concept it, it helps you know hold the space of you know the somewhat fragile environment of of making love to your partner, and when you do that, you can really dive into new depths of intimacy and continue to expand on your sexual exploration and your sexual intimacy. So it's really, really powerful. Yeah, there's actually a quote that I just want to share here that we often say, translate your complaints about what you don't want into requests about what you do want. So that you're, you know, it, you know, we're not saying suppress a complaint. It's just when one comes up, you know, as the Nike says, just do it. We say, just skip it. <laughs> but really, it's just translate it. In your mind, turn it around. And what do you actually want about that? So that you're leaning in towards a desire rather than recoiling from something that doesn't feel good as much as possible. You you know, in, ge in general, we're saying, you know, what you want to grow is, you want to be giving the energy to where you want to go. Um, mm. Yeah. Yeah, and, you know, as you're practicing this tip, um, you can practice another one of our tips, which is a do-over. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that gets used often, that <laughs> one. <laughs> and, because, um, you know, you it, it's kind of habitual and kind of patterned, partially because we're un we can be uncomfortable in the sexual realm to, to be like, you know, don't do that, or like that doesn't feel good, or whatever. And you can say when you something like that comes out of your mouth, "Can I get a do-over? I'd like mm -hmm. to do a do-over." <laughs> and then you could say it again, and you'll immediately recover. You know, there's this kind of spiraling down into the depths of no recovery. That will happen like 15 times during a lovemaking session. You can catch it and get it to go back up really quickly if you know these little recovery tools. Rather so, than kind of letting one thing yeah. ruin the whole moment, yeah. which is very common. Everything's great, you're ready to go. And they say one thing and it's you're done. Like, oh. 
like, we can recover, people. We can recover. <laughs> so either the um, person that said it, like, had a moving away from comment, uh, can say, oh, I'm gonna, could I do that over? Or the person who received that <laughs> moving away from comment can say, can I get a do-over? And it's a really lighthearted way to recover from that, and you can keep going on your merry sexual way. <laughs> <laughs> now, we have one other short tip that is going to transition us into our spicier Bratton family uh, s uh, flavor. Um, but oh, first, well, uh, before you do that, just one second. Um, I was going to say to you about before I do that, so maybe great minds think alike. I wanted, okay. to, I wanted to ask them what they if they had any input about toward versus away. Great. So just hold on one second, Susan and Tim. Can't wait to hear what you have to say. I just want to let all of our guests, our viewers, know that uh, at the bottom of the hour, approximately, we're going to go live on the Hangout. So you can right. kick that hang, click the Hangout button and show up with uh, us and our guests live and ask questions live. Um, also, we have some offers on the left-hand side. You can see on the page. You're welcome to explore those and send comments in uh, on the window, the comment window below the video player. We'd love to see what you're thinking and get kind of our heads around how we can help you today. Yep, so, that's but, the whole yeah. point of doing this live here, is so we can interact with you and hear your questions. And uh, Tim and Susan are ready for them too. So back to Tim and Susan. How about for you? Anything about the towards uh, versus away energy? Yeah, actually, I have a completely alternative viewpoint to offer. Mm. <laughs> <love> Great. It. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things I actually think that uh, that all of that is well and good, but it uh, it it has a presupposition in the construct, and what I mean by that is it assumes that your partner is is going to get their feelings hurt when you give them feedback. Mm -hmm. Just right. this week, uh, we sent out an email called OK Baby. And um, one of the things that we learned that took our sex life from that kind of kindness moving toward place to really dirty and hot, mm -hmm. which is why you brought us here, yeah. was <laughs> that, um, an, an even more advanced technique if you want hot, dirty sex, is uh, for a woman to be able to really... and. I just want to preface that when I say woman and man, I'm talking about masculine and feminine mm -hmm. energy. And I'm using them interchangeably. And people can switch roles. People can be gender queer. I'm this is not a um, this is not a sexual preference perspective. It's just simply the polarity of masculine feminine energy. Great. Uh, and I embrace all people who have sex, and I want them all to have more sex. You but, sure do. Uh, your, your show was really awesome and having all sorts of really great uh, voices from a wide variety of people. I love that. Everybody gets to have great sex. That's <laughs> a, a human right. Um, so Tim and I learned this pretty early on when we were trying to take our sex life to the next level, and that was that... Uh, if I'm going to completely surrender to my desire, if I'm going to just let go, if I'm going to stop worrying about what my what my body, how my body looks, if I'm going to stop worrying about what my ex response is to what he's doing or what I'm doing should be, mm. then I am not going to be able to to break out of my sexual turn on trance state to remember to be polite and. Uh, we have an we have an agreement, and the agreement is that I and he, but it's usually me because I'm the one that's having way more orgasms than he is. Now Tim is a male, multi-orgasmic male, and we're going to talk about that later. Some orgasm techniques, if we get to it as well. But for us to let go into our passion, polite and manners and all of those things just get put aside. They get left outside the bedroom door, and uh, we both have an agreement that there is no such thing as failure. There's mm -hmm. only feedback. And the feedback does not have to come in a wrapper of politeness. And in fact, it's actually more authentic and genuine and surrendered if you just say what you need in the moment and the other person responds with, okay, baby, just as an acknowledgement, not anything that is, it's a non-reactive judgment, basically, is what it is. And once we started doing that, mm -hmm. where I didn't, where he was man enough to, I mean, there were times when I was like beating on him for more, or you know, like <laughs> don't do that, I don't like it, you know, uh, being able to say it like that without having and, to filter it. And then I just say, okay, baby. Okay, baby. Okay, baby. Well, I, I like what you just did, Susan, and with then, the 
Oh, the, sorry. Go ahead, Tim. So the the whole point is to, uh, and this is many cases in the context of an expanded orgasm for her. Yeah. Where she needs to get into that state, and she said trance state, and it really it is. is. It's a trance state. Mm -hmm. Where it lasts, you know, 5, 10, 15, 30 minutes sometimes, mm -hmm. where she's literally having an orgasm that whole time. Yeah. And when she's in that trance state, having this expanded, extended orgasm, she can't really, like, get back into her conscious mind to say, you know, how am I going to filter this? How am I going to say this? She just has to blah, blurt it out. Yeah. And then I say, okay, baby. Yeah. And then I just do the you thing. Just adjust. <laughs> whatever that was, or you stop adjust. doing that thing and then do some new thing. Let me ask you so this. It's, it's I love, advanced. I love that. Uh, sorry, say, say that again, Tim. It's it's advanced. It's an advanced thing which takes it to that next level, which allows yeah. her to be like super feminine and just come. Yeah. Cool. For as long as we can do it. Yeah. And I can yeah, so great. Can. Gabby and I were kind of thinking the same thing that there's feedback from, you know, like Susan when she's communicating that, that like when she's kind of totally on it and upset about like you're doing it wrong, but then there's the way you said it was, you know, it had a lot of energy behind it, as Gabby likes to say, turn up the volume. Um, yeah. Is there an, a flavor to the way that your partner is speaking to you that makes it work more than another? Or does no, it not matter? Not just not go for, for it. It's just like, I just want her to just not get out of that trance state just like whatever it is. Sometimes it's like grunts or groans and sometimes it's words, you know. Sometimes, I mean, she literally does just like do some physical thing to let me know what's happening. All but right. That, you know, this has happened over years yeah. where we've gotten more and more attuned to each other. When a man can take any level of feedback from a woman with that level of serenity and confidence, when he has a core confidence that allows you to beat on him or go, hey, whatever it is um, that's just that that's arousal that's turn on and it's just complete you're just letting it happen and that is very hot yeah that's great it, yeah it would, I'm, it I'm be... just writing a note of you saying that uh, I, I need to <laughs> just mention a technical thing our Google Plus chat window seems to be not functioning as it should so if you want to comment click on the WordPress uh, icon below the video player we'd love to hear your comments questions etc we'll fix that for our next show so uh, one, of, one of the things that I'm, I, I'm actually getting excited about is it's kind of like a, a way for you to work on your masculine presence, your masculine mm -hmm. foundation, and mm -hmm. just be like, when you notice yourself going into like a younger space of feeling like you got in trouble, just like embrace it and step into the masculine of that. Yeah. Yeah, You, you can handle it. You can handle it. You can handle it. I like that phrase. You can handle it. He's dropped in. He's grounded. He's present. He's there. He's taking me on the ride. I'm riding his ride. She That's is. what masculine leadership, masculine sexual leadership is. And so if you're the bus driver, you need to know how you're doing. And that, that is super yeah, maybe helpful. Maybe we'll have to come back. I'm excited to try that one. Okay, right I'm going to call this one feisty feedback, you know? There you go. Feisty feedback. <laughs> It is. I like it too. And um, part of it is we we both have this common goal. Yeah. Like I know she's not doing it like to hurt my feelings. Mm -hmm. Plus, also we have a really strong base to our relationship. Yeah. So yeah. I'm not like worried about the relationship. Like if you try to do this with a like a brand new partner, it would be it's fraught with danger. But you know, with our history and years and years and years. That's where I don't worry about any of that stuff. All I know is we have this common goal where we're trying to get her into that trance state, and whatever she says is the right thing to do because she knows like how her body needs to be. And the mm -hmm. interesting thing is that it can't be like maybe what I did yesterday yeah. is not going to work today. Yeah. And like if I'm holding on to that, but Even I did this yesterday. <laughs> like this made you this made you squirt yesterday. How come it's not working today? That's totally irrelevant. That was like yesterday. I gotta be focused on what's gonna happen right now. And that's really was our point number one, which was what does Kitty want? You know, how do you get <laughs> Kitty purring? <Rur>. Yeah. <laughs> can we can we add to that right now? Is it okay if we segue into yeah, that? Absolutely, absolutely. Talk about what Kitty wants every day. So uh it's one of the things that helps me like keep this and not be tied to like, well, this is what I did before, and you know, this usually works. How come it's not working? It's thinking about 
every day is a new kitty. Yeah. Like it's it, kitty wants something new every day, and it might be the same thing that kitty wanted yesterday. But, but never there's is. no guarantee, <laughs> and so I'm kind of like exploring to see. All right, well, what does kitty want today? And whether I get that through physical feedback or whether I get that through some kind of verbal feedback, that's all of this is like helping me get there to the goal of getting Kitty super turned on. Because Kitty has hormones, and you know, <laughs> sometimes, uh, sometimes <laughs> she's really turned on and ravenously hungry for her sex with her man, and other times she needs to be coaxed out to play. Uh, so it and and. Sometimes you want harder strokes. Sometimes you want a way more delicate strokes. Sometimes, especially for women in our 40s, 50s, you know, perimenopausal, menopausal, we we have sensitivities, and sometimes we need tons of extra lube. Sometimes we're completely lubricated ourselves, you know. So it's really getting a sense of what's happening in that moment with not just your yoni, but just your whole body. Do you want more foreplay, less foreplay? Do, does it feel really good to have your nipples played with? Do you want a hot makeout first? Whatever it is. Is it too hot in the room? Is it yeah. too cold in yeah. the room? Is the Are the sheets too scratchy? Yeah. Is, the, is the music too loud? Is the music too soft? <laughs> wow, so you're like really a... You're directing and, and then your partner is is pleasuring you. <laughs> well, and, and Rashi does this thing, you make, uh, we call him ambiance man. You just, there's all of these factors, you know, and what is, what is wonderful one day may not be wonderful the next day. Yeah. I did write yeah. that down, by the way. We're going to see that in a little quote meme box that we're going to be putting out there. What does Kitty want today? <laughs> well, we, that ambiance man thing, that is setting the lover space. That's yeah. our words for it. And what you're really doing in that way, when you are the masculine setting the lover space, creating the ambiance, and actually tuning into the biofeedback and the feedback of your lover, you are once again bringing the masculine energy. Mm -hmm. You're creating the container yeah. into yeah. which she can expand her pleasure. Yes. So it's just one more way that guy can coax more orgasms out of his woman. Yeah. You know, and that actually brings us to the next topic, and we're going to kind of skip our distinction. I'll just use the idea and go straight to your tips, because clearly we're the babies here. So if you want to see where the lower on-ramp are, you can listen to Gabby and Raj's advice. We're going for the advanced here. Uh, <laughs> you're stretching, going for the gold, gold bra or brass ring there. Definitely be reaching reach into the other direction. Yeah, and so we had a, a question from one of our, our uh, viewers. Can I throw that in here? Yeah. Sure, but we're going to go to questions I thought in like 10 minutes. I just want to make sure we hear some of their distinctions. Oh, it was pertinent to, to this. To Got this. it. So Great maybe it. we'll just spend a little bit of time on this, and then we'll, we'll dive in. They've got deeper. lots of good tips yeah, we want to hear, yeah, and so then we're going to get to the questions live. So uh, the question was, it sounds like it's mostly about her. What does she do to please him? Uh-huh. That is such a we, common question. And, and Maybe our number one question. I think it is. Um, <laughs> what about me? <laughs> so, well, there, ultimately, if the woman's not turned on, you really shouldn't. I mean, you should, you should just stop. Because <laughs> if, she's, just stop. if she's doing stuff like out of duty or because she feels like she should or, you know, whatever reason and she's not turned on, that may work a couple of times. But I'm, I mean, literally in the context of if you want to have a really super hot, sexy relationship that's going to last for more than a couple of months, it, you have to get her into that space where she's super turned on and that's what you should be focused on. Now, um, I love that you said what. Well, just one pause. There. I love that you said context because that was the very first idea when we started on the first episode of the show. Wow. Is that the context is decisive. So, what do you want for your sex life? You know, is it something that is just, you know, for yourself? Is it for your partner? And your, you know, wh where are you going to grow together? So, thank you. That's a beautiful context you created. I wrote that one down. And, and just say a little bit more about that. Is um, is it that the the sexual sort of the I don't know what to call it. It's not biomechanics, but the biochemistry of the sexuality sexuality between you doesn't work if it's not working for the woman, and so you got to make sure that's happening first. Or, I mean, yeah. like, how does the whole "I want to give you a blowjob" thing work? Is that because <laughs> she's turned on and she wants to do that? Yes. So, well, that's when it works the best. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I think you know, kind of a general rule of thumb that we have, and we don't always stick with this, but if Susan's had 20 minutes of orgasms then I can kind of relax 
But before <laughs> that, I'm like vigilant. I am on guard. I'm like, well, what does Kitty want? What can I do? Like, how can I get her into that state? Because there's a kind of a thing where women are like, um, I don't know if you've heard this before, but women are like a rheostat and men are like a switch. So, you know, like literally all Susan has to do is put on some stripper shoes and some lingerie and it's like, <laughs> bam, I'm ready. <laughs> For her, I've got to like slowly coax her and like warm her up and get her going. And then, you know, once I get the, the heat turned up and the pot's been boiling for 20 minutes, then it's a totally different ball game. Like things are like it, then it's open and then I can start to worry about, well, what do I want? But until I get the pot boiling and it's been boiling for 20 minutes, I don't even think about it. <laughs> to, um, pri primally, um, men love to pleasure women. A lot of men say to me, you know, my number one thing is pleasing her. And I say, well, I understand that because that's actually a primal directive for men. <laughs> uh, however, if all you want to do is please her, then you're putting all this pressure on her to create this performance to mm -hmm. salve your ego. So yeah. it has to be about you taking your own pleasure too. Mm. The second, so showing your pleasure in giving her pleasure yep, is very important. The second thing is that once you're able to what we call getting her getting her up on a plane. Yeah. You get her to a certain point of turn on and then almost anything you do to her is going to feel awesome. Yeah. But when you do that and you consistently can get your woman into an orgasmic state of pleasure where every, every not every time, I mean, it's funny, we, we went on vacation and we had, we, I struggled, yeah. like in a different place, travel, time zone. You jet know, lag jet was a la big problem. But for the most part. <laughs> Uh, when uh, Tim gets me up on a plane, uh, and when before we almost got divorced because we weren't happy being together anymore because we had lost our intimacy, he had to t take me from zero and fill me back up orgasmically. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did that with this expanded orgasm practice, which we'll talk about in a little while. But it took him maybe like a year yeah. of con not that not that I didn't want to please him back but I, I I wasn't full orgasmically and so it felt like a duty to do him until we hit a certain point where it flipped and my turn on became so great that I desired more of him when I want the day that I wanted to suck his cock I knew in that moment that I'd achieved a new level of turn on, mm. desire, surrender, and connection with my husband. And from that day on, I and got. And yourself, a, right. And myself. Yeah. Really, really, really She's good. Back. <laughs> back. And it was like being newlyweds all over again. And yeah. we've been able to sustain that for 11 years since yeah. of our 22 married. That's awesome. And so uh, once you kind of get her there and you get the skills to get her there, then she gets so turned on that she just starts to really love to have sex with you. And so it is the man's initiative, the masculine's initiative to get that woman to that point. And once he does, it unlocks, it, it, it breaks open the floodgates, it does. literally and figuratively. <laughs> 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 it's so true. Yeah. So, so um, Susan, we are going to open it up live to some questions in a moment, but I, I know we've talked about several of the tips that you had sent me in advance, but you just mentioned the extended orgasm. You wanted to say something about that. Sure. So expanded orgasm is one of the two things that saved our marriage and saved our sex life and got it onto what we like to call the upward pleasure spiral. It's the thing that allowed me to become the sexual woman that I am, the one who begged you to let me do the dirty section <laughs> proudly, uh, who studies and breaks down into great detail for literally millions of people how they can have this too. And it was expanded orgasm. And mm. we were taught by a number of people, it is a technique. It is a clitoral stroking technique that allows a woman, uh, so you know how uh, a man, uh, he will uh, get turned on, get turned on, get turned on, he'll have his climax, and then he's done. That's not actually true. Men are multi-orgasmic. Women, we believe they are multi-orgasmic, uh, so we know that they can have multiple orgasms, and those orgasms can get better and better and better and better. 
Well, there's a way that you can actually take that moment of orgasm and stretch it out like taffy so that you're actually coming like in the climactic moment for how long, babe? Oh, I wouldn't start more than a couple of minutes to begin with, but once you get good at it, it can be like 30 minutes. You can have then you've got to take a break. You can, you can have, one day I was like, let's just see water. how long I can come. You know, like, how long can you make me come? Generally, we, we keep a, a pitcher of water yeah. by the bed. Yeah, you get thirsty. Because at some point, when a woman's been having an orgasm for, for 30 minutes, she needs to get a sip of water because her mouth is dried out because yeah. she's been moaning so much. You know, it, it reminds me of when I was a kid. I lived on the beach, and we would ride the boogie board wave all the way in. You know, so yeah. it's like catch that wave, and you're like, good to the last drop. Here we go. Absolutely. <laughs> And so the Expanded Orgasm Practice was one of our very first programs that we created with Dr. Patty Taylor, who actually has her master's degree in female orgasm. PhD. PhD. And, thank you. Yeah. In female orgasm. And she's a very good teacher of the technique. The technique was originated in the 1970s by Dr. Victor Baranco and his wife, Susie. And they created an organization called Moore House, the Moore House University. Mm -hmm. Many disciples have gone on to teach this technique. And it's uh, uh, Didier Odier, Didier Odier um, uh, Nicole Daydone from One Taste, um, RJ from the Welcome Consensus, Erwin Davin from the Pleasure Course, Stephen Vera Bodansky. Stephen Vera Bodansky, Extended Massive Orgasm. But it all comes down to this simple clitoral thing. You stroke her finger, you stroke her clitoris with your finger in a certain way and there's some opening strokes and things like that but it's ultimately a very simple female genital massage technique. And that, if somebody wanted to learn that technique where would you direct them to? You said there's taught in so many places but where would be the easiest place? We've actually had someone even send us a video before that was done I think it was a one taste video for teaching oming. Uh -huh. um, but where would you direct people? So uh, we have three free pleasure reports that explain uh, what is expanded orgasm, touching for rapture, and orgasmic peaking, which is a oh, part of it. Oh, that word rapture, uh, you know, just you know, the way you even say it, rapture, you know, it's got surrender and, you know, ravaged, all wrapped up in it. It sounds like oh. velvet. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, those are three free reports that we give away at Expand Her Orgasm Tonight. Expand Her Orgasm Tonight. Yes. Com get those stuck on and um, uh, that has been one of our most popular programs mm -hmm. that we've ever sold it has 21 erotic play dates that allow a couple to slowly learn the skill together because it is um, something that the man and the woman actually you learn you learn it together you begin as beginners and learn together and that set in the level of orgasmic you know, like it filled me up orgasmically. It gave Tim a real feeling of prowess and power and masculine control over my turn on that he loved. And we have had how many years now? Expanded orgasm practice. We've been doing. We did it Ten. like a couple days ago. We do it once or twice a week. Yep. Uh, every week and we've done it for over ten, ten, years, ten years for a decade we've been doing it for a decade and we've been um, you know promoting that course and selling our course that we created for probably six or seven years yep. now and um, it's changed a lot of people's lives because yes. it's what gets a woman's genitals engorged it's what brings all this wonderful blood into her vulva, inside, outside, her vestibular bulbs, her clitoris, her vaginal canal, all the mons, all this stuff gets full of blood. And then, like we said, once she gets to that level of turn on, then she can start having orgasms from intercourse. She can become orgasmic. She can become multi-orgasmic. She can have orgasms from intercourse. Mm -hmm. She can have orgasms from just, you know, thinking about it after a while because <laughs> she becomes so orgasmic. I am now at the point where, and this is common for women who do this practice, that I can start having orgasms running through my body before Tim even sits on the bed. Like just <laughs> anticipation of it. No. So um, the channel so really this what opens we call, up. We, we like to talk about, and we do these mini seductions that lead to short on-ramps. And it mm. sounds like you have a very short on-ramp. That's great. We're going we're gonna to work on that, that he <laughs> yeah. sits on the bed and I'm ready to go. <laughs> Exactly. So, Susan, could you tell us the, the URL for that? Again, um, we're going to put that in the comments window so our guests can oh, find that. Great. Expand her orgasm 
tonight. Expand her orgasm tonight. Dot com. Awesome. Yes, I'll be sending you one of them immediately after this event. <laughs> Great. We can't wait to try that. Awesome. You have the best homework possible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we do. <laughs> All right. Awesome. We're gonna um, open it up now, and uh, you know, during that time, uh, we can ask some questions from our, our viewers, but also we can continue on with learning some of this great, great stuff that you guys uh, are here to share today. So for our audience, uh, if you just refresh your browser window, your Join the Hangout uh, button will now be live. Okay. Uh, if it's not live, refresh your browser, yeah, and um, you'll appear with us live on the Hangout. And uh, you can chat your questions in the comment. Uh, chat chat window on the right, and um, we'll we'll get to answering some of your awesome questions. Yeah, if you put the questions in the comments, then we can unmic you and answer those questions. Yeah. We just need to know who first. Yeah. So again, hit that join the hangout button, and uh, we're offering a special gift to people that join us live today. Our 25-page free five simple solutions to how to keep the, fi the fights clean and the sex dirty. So anyone that joins us live on the Hangout today will get emailed a copy of that free guide today. And the cheat sheet with the summary. Because for me, sheet, yeah. I like, I used to make, you know, a little, I'd read a book or like, you know, or do some program and I'd write flash flashcards and put them around the house so I'd really like remember them. Well now we all have these infographics. So we made this awesome infographic that has all the top tips from that tool um, on a front to back so that you could print it and, uh, you know, have fights clean on one side, sex dirty, put it in your purse, you know, up your bed stand, you know, I'm like, what was that tip? <laughs> <laughs> but um, you, do we have time then while we're waiting for yeah, people to yeah, come yeah, on? Yeah. So I just, uh, so far you've talked about what does Kitty want, which I love that so much. And you've talked a bit about the masculine sexual leadership mm -hmm. um, and creating the surrendered sex. Yeah. And you even talked a bit about getting her up with escalation. I know you ha we haven't spoken all of these, but I just want to like recap for people. Um, these are really great. What is the keeping up with her uh, menus? Keeping her up with menus. Yeah. So this comes from uh, one of our other programs, the Seduction Trilogy. And mm -hmm. what we really did was we wanted to create uh, seduction for people in relationship. We wanted to teach people how to seduce their partner their whole life long. And essentially there are four keys to seduction and one of the keys is uh, running menus of small offers for your lover. <laughs> you can do this when you're starting, you can do this in the middle of sex, uh, all throughout sex to keep things getting more and more sexy. So why don't you run a couple of menus uh, as examples, would you mind? So yeah, there's and there's all different contexts, and I'm constantly running Susan menus. Yeah. I'm giving her choices, yeah. but I'm controlling the frame. I'm controlling the direction of what's happening. And this is super helpful for you know talking your woman into sex. Like you would <laughs> never say, "Hey, baby, you want to have sex tonight?" Because that's like no. for a woman, she's gonna go like, "Oh my God, there's dishes in the sink, you know, and ah, uh, there's I, 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 no, I, I don't want to do that." So we have a thing called show don't tell. Show not tell. Yeah, yeah. It's like I, I let's have sex now is not a seduction. <laughs> it's not, not at all. And this is the thing that guys just don't understand. They're all like, "Hey, baby, you want to have sex?" And it's like, no. <laughs> it doesn't. But she might like a foot rub, or she might like, you know, maybe a, a little shoulder massage, or maybe she'd like for you to draw her a warm bath. And so you can think of these things like, you know. Oh, um, would would you like a would you like a foot rub or would you like a little neck rub or maybe you'd like me to draw you a bath mm -hmm. or maybe you'd like to go in the hot tub? Mm -hmm. So these are all things where it's like a very easy thing for her to think about, and maybe the dishes still need to be done, and maybe these other things need to happen. But she think I might go in the hot tub for ten or fifteen minutes. So then you could take her to the next step. Like, now she's naked, which is great. <laughs> That's a really good first step. Um, and then you could say, all right, well, maybe uh, one of the great things about the uh, expanded orgasm practice and the, the date ideas that you get out of that is, like, you can take her the next step. Well, maybe you might like to have, uh, 
uh, maybe like an ass rub or something like that. <laughs> I and love an ass rub. She does. I know. <laughs> that, that, that one. That one. The ass rub goes that, a long way. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but if you're thinking about, well, what are some really easy things to go to the next step? It's like a whole series of menus. Mm -hmm. um, and then she just says, well, I might like this. And then she's thinking about those things. Yeah. And even if she doesn't want to do like the next step, you might be able to get her there after you've done the first thing. Um, so giving her menus is just choices of things that she might like. Yeah. Um, but we also do that actually while we're having sex. Yeah. So now let's assume that I've done my job and I've gotten her like step by step by step. It's a very slippery slope. And so now, you know, <laughs> woo! <laughs> there I go again. <laughs> so now you could think about, well, would you like to have, uh, you know, say I've given her her 20 minutes of orgasms through the expanded orgasm practice and say, now, uh, Looks like we got. Oh, all right, we got customers coming on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, would you, would you like to give me a blowjob, or maybe we should do sixty nine, and mm -hmm. I can continue fingering your G spot. Mm -hmm. I th there's just menus. It's just different ideas of things. Yeah, he'll throw three, four, five things up I for will. me, and I'll be like, um, well, I'd like to do that and that. You know, and so he's always throwing out ideas. I'll take a number Ask one me. and a four, and can I get a half order of three? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, because we women like to shop offers yeah. <laughs> for us, which mm -hmm. always accelerates our, you know, our erotic sensation, and we feel like we're in control but being led, which is a really nice combination, mm -hmm. and it's really good to offer uh, at least three things, that's a good number, three offers, and have one be kind of safe, one be the one you think she might be ready for based on what she's typically doing, and one that's kind of like completely, you know, different because if you want dirty sex yeah. you've got to keep coming up with really great new fresh ideas because turn on is a combination of novelty or variety and safety so if you want to keep taking your part keep taking your woman to mm -hmm. the next level you've got to it's it's like her sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system what you're doing is you're actually toggling those two so you're comforting her and turning her on you're offering her some novelty or variety something totally unique as well as something safe so she knows she's safe so she can keep taking more from you uh, saying yes to bigger and more wild offers because there's always something grounded in that safety yeah we call that uh, being uh, bold but with baby steps that it's it's wow. that stretching yeah. and then making sure that that's feeling safe so it's the take her to the edge but not so close that she's feeling you know pushed over and um, should I tell them about the three nose naughty yeah, yeah. We, where did that? We, so we have this awesome distinction of three nose of naughty that speaks directly to to this awesome tip, and and it allows that kind of easy way to test out the waters. Because the, there, yeah. there's the no, which means like you have to try a little harder. But I'm interested. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's yeah. the. No, like I don't think so, but you might be able to convince me. And then there's the no, and that's like don't bring it up. We're going the wrong direction if we even start talking about that one. <laughs> um, do you want to? I, I know we're unmiked with one person there, so yeah, uh, um, we we lost our our moderator Yafat. So I think we can only speak to the person who is uh, unmiked right now. But let's go ahead and do that. Yeah, we'll see. Greg, can you hear us? I mean, sorry, say something, can we hear you? <laughs> or Susan? Susan, is this Susan here? No, it's, uh, oh, oh, got it, okay. Maybe he can't, they, we can't hear him until Yafat logs back yeah, on. Her, yeah. Our moderator told us her computer crashed, so this is our first She operated tech glitch. her operating system uh, on the Windows environment, and her computer's oh. acting all wacky. It was, it was funny, she's always talking about Windows being better, but... Um, oh, there we go. Something oh, just he's, happened. He's, his audio is working. Do you know, Greg? Um, I can hear I'm you, Greg. Finishing up that note to Nara, to Nara. Greg? What's that, Greg? I think they can hear him. Okay, go ahead and mute, mute okay, him then. Mute Greg. Okay. Can you unmute anyone else? I can't. No. You can't. Okay, so we're going to take another tip from you, yeah, and when your thought comes back in, we'll unmic and ask, uh, answer some questions. 
<clears throat> can I hear you now, Susan? Are you still there? Yeah. Oh, yeah, great. Okay, great. Okay, awesome. All right, so menus. Love that one. And I love alliterations, one-liners, so I'm, of course, going to reframe these. Some of these are awesome as direct quotes, and I'm going to make some fun little quote meme boxes that I'll send you. I love, you know, the little memes of these, you know, memorable ideas that you can kind of just send out there and a way of seeing it. And, you know, because it's not just what we hear and goes in one ear and out, but really what makes it a practice over time. Because, as you know, after 22 years, it's a practice over time mm -hmm. um, to really build that muscle and shorten those on-ramps. Um, so we've talked about some orgasm techniques for women. Did you uh, want to talk about orgasmic techniques for men? And then the other tip we have here is a sharing frames for postcodal bliss, which mm -hmm. gets a little bit into the after, but um, we love that too. We want to get as much great advice from you as we can today. And our moderator is back up and running, so let's um, maybe do a quick... Uh, dive into what Gabby just spoke about and then open it up for some questions. Okay. So, uh, or orgasm techniques for men and women. We talked about the expanded orgasm technique, which I consider to be kind of the, the, f the foundation of our sex life, actually. Oh, yeah, it's super important. It's uh, the number one thing that we do. Um, and uh, the second one is ejaculatory, female ejaculatory orgasms, which every woman is capable of doing. And uh, it's a really extraordinary and exquisite orgasmic experience. And a lot more women are becoming aware mm. of the possibility of having it. And um, I just like to encourage people who are interested in it to explore it because it's a learnable skill. And uh, I don't know if there's anything that you want to say about it other than it's a lot of fun. And I, I, the other thing that I would say is that it's kind of, um, I don't know, in some ways one of the most intimate things that you can share as a couple because yeah. when a woman is that surrendered that she can just let all of her expectations out, um, men, most men, at least men who understand uh, that this is a really beautiful thing and don't kind of get weirded out by it because mm. they're not familiar with it. Um, most men are really honored to have the experience of a woman who can have ejaculatory orgasms. Um, I didn't know how to do it. I saw it and I thought, I want to do that. And so Tim and I learned how to do it and that created our program, Female Liquid Orgasm, that we created with Tallulah Sulis, who was doing these squirt shops all over the world, <laughs> teaching couples and singles how to do these ejaculatory orgasms. And so I'd say that's one of the other kind of advanced female orgasm techniques that uh, can really take your, neck, your sex life to a level of like clean, very clean, dirty sex that's really fun. You can, you can, <laughs> you can clean, dirty it all sex. over your boyfriend or your husband and he can just lie there and take it all in or he can be the one who's pulling it out of you and, you know, kind of making it happen and that's really exciting too. Yeah, and uh, so one of the things that a lot of guys like about it that I especially liked at first was that, you know, because we learned about yeah. this quite a while ago when we were just getting our sex life back on track. Yeah. And I was always a little worried that, you know, maybe Susan was faking it, like maybe this, I wasn't really giving her all these great <laughs> orgasms. But the first time she squirted, it's like, I knew this is not the kind of thing that a woman can easily fake. She is really, she is totally surrendered. She's totally let go. And she's just like, uh, you know, exploding. So uh, it's amazing. It's amazing when you know that your partner is that turned on. And for me, that was the first time that I'd ever really felt that with any woman, like that closeness. And would you just say that URL one more time? And Aaron, uh, would you capture that and put that in the comments for them so uh, people can get access to that uh, new adventure? Yeah. <laughs> Female Liquid Orgasm. Dot com. Female Dot com. Yeah. Orgasm dot com. Dot awesome. Com. <laughs> Okay, so let's uh, see if we have some questions from our audience. Um, we've, we had a little bit of technical difficulty with our moderator, so I'm not totally certain how to do this, but I think I can unmute you directly. If Just throw something in the chat window if you want to jump in here with a question. And uh, if, I ha if I were you, <laughs> I'd jump in the chat. Also, shoot us. Um, okay, Megan. Uh, and also, sh uh, if you want to get our free guide um, for joining on the live hangout, just put your email address in the con in the comment window. Okay, Megan, take it away. I think she's and muted. And if that I can't unmute her, so you're gonna have to do that. All right. 
Megan, can you unmute yourself? Hmm. Okay, while Megan's figuring that out, let's see if someone else would like to uh, ask a question. Oh, oh there we no, go. No. Okay. <laughs> nope. Oh, yeah, uh -oh. There we go. Oh, okay. Hello. I can't hear you now, but. Hi, Megan. Do it. Megan, ask your question and then mute yourself, and maybe you'll be able to hear us again, okay? But you've muted her. Just unmute yourself again. Okay, she didn't have a question. So how about Greg? Then remember to un unmute We've yourself. We've unmuted Greg. you, but you just have to unmute yourself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, wait, I don't, we're, we're having a problem here with our technical difficulties. Should you want to work on that and... Okay, so I Greg doesn't have a question. All right. All right, so we'll just keep going. If someone does have a question, just... Okay, Sarah. Awesome. Sarah, can you unmute yourself? Or our moderator, can you unmute Sarah? Yay, I got a question. <laughs> okay, so let's see. There we go. Not very good. Am I all glitchy? Can you guys hear me? Yes. We can. Okay, so my question is for Tim. Um, I'm wondering, have you always felt like her being turned on was like the most important part? You guys, a level of like communication for you to be able to get to that point where you realized that like her needs needed to be met first. It's a long question. Like, how do you get to Very that point? Reason. <laughs> Great question. So I couldn't hear the question. Can you rephrase it? Sure. Um, I'll, I'll say it again because Sarah's internet is just a little bit uh, slow. So just correct me if I'm wrong, Sarah. But she's asking, Tim, uh, was it always your first priority to make sure that Susan was sexually pleasured? Um, and Sarah, what's the next part? Before his sexual desires were taken care of? Or how did you phrase the question? Yeah, pretty okay. much. Okay, great. Yeah, if, if he was always like that, and if not, how long did it take for that to, to learn that? Right, that's an excellent question. Yeah. So the answer is no, I wasn't. Um, and I didn't really think about it. I didn't know how important it was. So I just, I kind of had an assumption that... I would do some stuff and Susan would do some stuff and we would like take care of each other and give each other orgasms and you know it would be fine and that worked for like a year or two you know we we met we fell in love we had all those um, new relationship energy yeah the new relationship energy love, chemicals all the hormones the oxytocin all that stuff worked and I'd only ever been in relationships for you know like a year or two and that had always worked but then after about three or four years all of a sudden well not really all of a sudden but it like it started to drop off and then Susan didn't want to have sex as much anymore and I couldn't really understand why it's like well, why not what do you mean and then I would just like ask her I'd be like hey let's have sex you know and I was doing the same stuff that I had always done and I didn't really understand why it wasn't working and it wasn't working because she didn't have all those new relationship hormones that were like making her body want to have sex so I didn't know what to do and I thought you know well maybe something's wrong maybe she's getting too old to want sex because you know she was like 35 35 and you know and by this time time we'd had a baby and it's like well maybe she doesn't want to have sex because you know she's had a baby and maybe it's just done and maybe she's a lesbian and she lied to me so she could have a baby like you know this unfolded over like years and then we almost got divorced because I was miserable and I didn't know what to do it was only after I learned about masculine feminine balance how to like get her body to start to feel like we were newlyweds that I learned that oh this is what I need to do and 
uh, once I knew what to do, it happened pretty quickly. Like I was able to turn it around within the space of like I saw some immediate progress in like a couple of weeks. Yeah. And then, you know, it just got better and better and better. This is, um, we actually have a course for this. <laughs> what is <laughs> because it? Revive Her Drive. Oh, yeah, Revive Her oh, Drive. Yeah. For guys to know what to do. Yeah. Um, How to turn it back on. Right. So yeah. this was one of the first courses we came out with because for us it was so pivotal. pivotal. Um, Great. And how can so people find that? RevivehERdrive.com, I'm going to assume. <laughs> <laughs> you put that into the comments so, there. So the answer is no, I didn't know. And <laughs> I was operating, I think, I, you know, I, I was a pretty regular guy. Yeah. And, you know, I would had girlfriends and things like that. And I just did what I always did. And I didn't realize that essentially that would cause the passion to drain out of your relationship like after three or four years. Mm. So, but the it's good news is because there's so many it. relationships that only make it three or four years. And uh, to why. me it's so sad <laughs> that, you know, you've invested all this time and you've gotten to know so much about each other. And I, have, I like to say the problem isn't the problem. The problem is you think the problem's the problem. The problem is actually the path. And if there's something that's not working, it's because mm. they're directing you towards that next piece of growth and development. Mm -hmm. Whether that be with sex or in another area, for you even, you're, you're, you're being thrust into this experience that is going to take you to the next level, but many people would just kind of pull the ejector seat at that point. Yeah, right. and it's really access to continually up-leveling your, up your relationship. If you really look at the problems as the path, it's just what's your next, level, next thing to learn how to do. <laughs> and yeah. there's so much great information out there and available to us these days that... Don't pull the ejector seat. <laughs> Turn yeah. on your computer <laughs> and find these URLs. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it's uh, there's a lot available now. Yeah, great. So um, we still have a few minutes. Any last questions from our audience? Just throw them in the chat window, and we'll also make you live, or we can just answer them without you being live. And um, oh, someone missed a question here. here. Okay, how did he gain the confidence to allow her to be herself and not take her feedback personally? Yeah, and you know, Alex Allman and his, uh, he was on episode four, he talked a lot about confidence and the, mm -hmm. and the importance of self-esteem as it applies in your sexual relationship, whether it be about body image or about jealousy or about, you know, being able to try something new and being bold. Confidence is a really important place to, to look. You guys have anything to add to that idea? Yeah. Um, so the expanded orgasm practice was really helpful um, because at first Susan would give me feedback and it, it would hurt my feelings and I because I didn't feel like I knew what to do. Uh, I think if you get the feedback and you don't like you you kind of know like maybe what I was doing before wasn't the right thing and I didn't really know what to do it can hurt a guy's confidence. But if he has a basis, like once we started to do the, essentially the expanded orgasm practice, <clears throat> I knew that that worked. Like it wasn't just me doing stuff that I thought I should do because it worked on a previous girlfriend, which is shaky at best because she may have been lying to you to protect your feelings. Like, mm -hmm. oh, that was the greatest orgasm ever. And she's thinking, oh my God, I can't wait for him to be done. <laughs> if you're building on something that's like... This a, comes from a lineage. Yeah, it's a proven technique. Of like people that have been developing this, you call it a technology or yeah. a technique, you know it works. Yeah. And so now you have something that you can really like, well, okay, maybe this stroke isn't working right now, but what does Kitty want? Kitty wants a firmer stroke. Or like you have tools and techniques, mm -hmm. and then that gives you confidence. I would so have I to didn't have the confidence, and then I, I kind of got the confidence over a couple of months once we started working on it. Yeah, I've been trying to figure out what shifted for me from the interview that we did with Alex Allman, like Gabby said earlier in the show, for those of you who weren't there, that there was like a nonlinear shift in my sexual presence. Yeah, that's an uh, understatement. And um, it, it was simply that, exactly what you said, Tim, that... Uh, that I learned some things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> New information. It's, <laughs> it's really unfair that there's this kind of idea that guys are like supposed to just know what to do. Yeah, but, you know, how do we know? We don't know. 
it's amazing when you actually learn something and you apply it and then it works and you're like, I got the power, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and what I loved is it wasn't information about a technique, although those are awesome too. Um, mm. It was information about the confidence, about the way of being, about actually dancing with the energy and really looking at the polarities and letting those polarities flow back and forth but being conscious that you're not both in the masculine or both yes. in the feminine at the same time mm -hmm. and doing this dance and it was hot. <laughs> wow, that's great. And yeah. you know, one compliment I just wanted to give the two, you 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 had said, you know, this is, you know, well thought out, this is well researched. Some of the practices I'm sure you're teaching are thousands of years old, you mm -hmm. know, and really being resurrected even some of these. Yeah. Um, but I appreciate that you put this fun spin on, you know, uh, Susan, you know how much I love fun. And whether, you know, it's, um, you know, the, what was your one, what does Kitty want? Um, and so there's this, it's based on research, it's based on some really sound thought. Your products that you've done right here, you know, this one, for example, that we love so much, your sexy sex ed, um, you did that one. It's actually um, Jaya uh, is the woman who's actually in it. And I just love that you partner with, it's not like, oh, I've got to do and talk about everything. Mm. You're really getting out content that's the best of the best in these particular areas. You know, you find, oh, the person who's, you know, the, doing the score, score shops, you know, <laughs> let's do something with her. And really doing it in a way to get it out to the masses. Because we all know the world would be a much more relaxed, happier, healthier place if there was a lot more orgasms going around. <laughs> I know I'm much nicer to be around. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's true. Honey, do you want to grab that oh, yes. just for a second? Yes. And um, Sarah, want to ask the question, what is the book you just mentioned? Oh, it's not a book. I don't think it's... it's... Uh, yeah, I'll show, show oh, them the, that. The, yeah. the videos. Th this, yeah. is, um, this is actually a DVD set. And are there any more of these? Or is this like now you have to find it on the internet and bribe bro, to borrow it or something? Are there more of these available or is this is this done? We're going to make it available again in November. November. On, okay, yes. Yeah, so, 12th is our next Steamy Sex Ed sale. So put that in. Make sure it's in your Christmas stocking stuffer. Um, they are made in a limited quantity. So, uh, oh, Tim's looking like, is it November? <laughs> um, but keep this on your radar and get your hands on this. And if um, any of her other products are even half as good as this one, then it's an awesome, awesome investment, let me tell you. But and this brings us to some of the things. Rosh and I, we have, we've mentioned a few times before, but we haven't had it on the show, the Fights Clean Sex Dirty Toolkit. Yeah, and we just want to show, yeah, it's, that's in our kit. It's one of actually, our I was joking earlier, it's not just in our kit these days, it's actually <laughs> in our nightstand. So <laughs> here's our kit, and this isn't available yet, but we just wanted to um, start, sorry honey, we wanted to give a little preview, and if you're interested about this, just shoot us an email. At Gabby at relationship. It's hard, a little hard to see. I'll pull back yeah. here. So we got our monster hats pulling out. You want to pull that monster hat? This yeah. is, you know, the Fights Clean Sex Dirty Toolkit. We like props. We like structures. And literally, if we're having a fight, that would be in the shot. If we're having a fight, <laughs> yeah, if we start being monsters, we'll actually put on our monster hat. <laughs> um, but there's all sorts of fun things in here since this is the uh, Sex Dirty episode. This is one of yeah. my favorite latest editions. These are like these kind of neoprene uh, uh, cuffs here that, that clip together and off. So and we have this, you know, like this tape. So you can be making your own of just all sorts yeah. of fun. There's a few other things in there that's still a little too personal for me to share. But, uh, <laughs> but you can create your own kit. So, yeah, we just wanted to give a little preview and see if anyone's excited about that. Um, and uh, if, that, if you could capture the email address in the in the window, um, Gabby at Relationship Fun and Games. Uh, just shoot us an email. Let, me, let us know if you're interested. We're going to start uh, developing one of those in the future. For now, we've actually, just as a friend gets married or big things happen like that, we've been gifting them to people and getting mm. lots of great feedback. Just mm -hmm. even when you go get the kit, whether it's for sex or for fights, um, it just sends a message to your partner, like, I'm here to work play, work, and really give our relationship some uh, attention. And it's a way of, you know, bringing the humor. You know, there's all sorts of, of really fun, silly props in there to lighten up when you're arguing and um, even lighten up when you're getting down. <laughs> so if there were one, like, just awesome tip to leave our audience with, what would it be, Susan and Tim? Well, I'll leave you with the last thing on the list, which is <clears throat> something we call sharing frames. And uh, it really makes your sex a lot hotter when 
after you have made love or whatever you've done, uh, and it can be in the car later, it can be two days from then, it can be just before the next time you have sex, it doesn't really matter, but um, actually sharing a moment in time and describing your physical sensations uh, and what was going on for you when you had sex uh, to your partner, like describing some really hot moment for you in lovemaking time so that your partner has some idea of what your favorite moments were mm -hmm. and then they can remember that and know oh that's what she liked the best oh my god that's so interesting I barely even remember doing that and yet that was the thing for her that was the hottest thing we did the last time we made love so I even, love that and it sets you up for this even better ifing all the time Raj and I we call that a romp recap and we actually have three categories yeah. that we talk about and we even score ourselves on a scale of one to ten just like well I give it a you know kind of like a American bandstand meets I don't know well we, we do I, I attribute it with the basketball I don't know if you're basketball fans but the triple double when you get ten, three tens you know rebounds assists and points and so the triple double is a ten in intimacy a 10 in sexiness and a 10 in technique. It just gives a really easy platform to talk about it and it makes uh, it normal and casual yeah. like where do you want to go for dinner? How was sex last night? <laughs> 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 and just you know we really want to set our relationship and you know with um, uh, whether it be sex or fighting that it just keeps even better ifing because I always say progress not perfect because relationships are hard and messy and we go up and down and round and round and there's phases and seasons um, so it's just as long as we're always like having even better ifs. Awesome. So Love Susan, it. Tim, um, just to let our audience know how to get you, get in touch with you and your material, what's the best link for them to, to access? Personal Life Media. Personal Life Media, you heard it here. And there's a wide variety of content on there. Um, I just love, I love that. So tons, oh, yeah. not yeah. just Everything in this we realm. Everything talked about is on there. Yeah. Uh, all the free ebooks are on there. So mm -hmm. if you just go to personallifemedia.com, you can kind of get to everything we've talked about and tons of articles. If you use the search box in the top right corner, you'll end up, you know, if you type in sharing frames, if you talk, if you type in running menus, if you talk about, ero type in erotic escalation, if you type in masculine sexual leadership, all the things we've talked about will, will return tons of articles for you. Fantastic. And we'll put the comments of the six distinctions that we talked about today there so that people can see them. And um, when people come and watch the replay, they can see that summary as well. I'm a real visual person. A lot of us are. So it's real nice to, to see them as well. All right, everybody. What a great show. So fun with Yay. you. Yay. Thank you. Join it's so great next to have you. Week. Next week, we're doing Fights Clean. Um, after. after. Fights Clean. Yeah, after. what to do after the fight? Yeah. You made it through. <laughs> You know, what are you going to do? Just like wait for it to happen the next time. And we're going to have Brian Franklin and Jennifer Russell join us. And, Fantastic couple. And it's, couple. it's a special, special episode because they're the reasons we're doing this work. Mm -hmm. When they got married, we got to stand for them uh, as one of the five values, representing one of the five values of their marriage. And they led a seminar the next day on relationships. And they had us speak to about 200 people or so, maybe mm -hmm. a bit more. And the response was so overwhelmingly positive that for after that, for years, our friends said, you've got to do this, you've got to do this. Mm -hmm. So it's great content and a special uh, couple being on there. And speaking of a special couple, thank you for being here. Yeah, and so Tim, great. I know you don't do this often. You were awesome. Yeah, and thank yeah. you so much. <laughs> Good to have you today, Tim. We're going to have to get you in front of the camera more often. Yes. You guys are great together. <laughs> yeah. There's something special about seeing the dynamic of yeah, a couple together. You get both sides of the equation. <laughs> so thanks for being our here. Gift and thanks to you. <laughs> What's that? Say that again. I said it was our gift to you. I made him do it. <laughs> oh, well, thank, thank you, you for surrendering. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And to all our guests, thanks so much for being here. And uh, please, you come next week and bring your questions. We're really looking forward to personalizing this for you, so you get the most value and that you get to have the most awesome, playful, peaceful, passionate relationship possible. Have a wonderful weekend and try out some of our tips. Have a great weekend, everybody. <laughs>